Hey up YouTube, first day back at work today and a bit messy, <coughs> a bit dirty. I'm still short of breath, I'm waiting for the doctors to find out what it is, so I might be a bit breathy. <sighs> but I feel all right. So today's been my first day back at work. Now I know that previous 30 seconds has made me look like I'm in peak physical health. I'm still recovering, I'm still, I can't be too, you know, I can't rush into things. So what I've done today is I had a busy day today, but I'll break it down for you. So I had eight jobs to do today, uh, but you'll see what I mean. I've got two tomorrow and then Wednesday, I think I've got three. Thursday, I think I've got two and I've got a hospital appointment. And then Friday, I've got half a day. Saturday, I've got two jobs in the morning. Sunday, I'm off. Some people might be well get all them jobs done in a day and you can have the rest of the week off, but and then I'll just be killing myself doing all of it. Uh, but at the same time, I like I like the scent the feeling that I get after today. And what feeling I get is is a sense of productivity and a sense of familiar, you know, I'm back to work. I'm not just at home sitting on my arse in my boxes watching classic Corey and Tom and Jerry and playing worms. I'm good at worms right now. Um, fl you know, sh flashback for anybody who is, you know, who knows what worms is. But yeah, I, I've, I've had me time off. I've enjoyed it. I've tried to stay as productive as I can and make the most of it. But now is the time for work and now is the time to be productive. And by God, I've missed it. I must admit, I really have missed it. I really do enjoy my job. My old job, I think every job I used to have, I always used to have two days off together. So I had a weekend in essence, and it always used to be Wednesday and Thursday. So for years and years and years, you know, Tuesday night, like I was off Wednesday, Thursday, but it was always like Thursday night, basically with the weekend. And when I was at school, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind school, but I don't think anyone really enjoys school. And I used to, you know, you get that bloody Friday, you know, Monday, Sunday night thing where you're like, oh, I've got to go to work tomorrow. And I still get it, but I quickly like, oh, I work for myself now. And I'm like, oh, I enjoy it. And I really do. I can't big up my sort of thing as much, you know, as much as I do. I really, really enjoy my job. I really do. I, I love it to bits. Um, so, yeah, so what have I been doing today and why am I talking about it? And what's happening uh, hopefully there's some points that you'll see and it'll sort of there's like little subjects on each point so eight jobs today have I been out all day no <laughs> eight when I say eight jobs that could sound like a lot or not a lot depending on how much work you do me I was out the house for 22 28 minutes past nine I was at my first job for half nine uh, did the eight jobs I didn't have a break I just carried on all the way through and I finished at half three. That was my last job, done and dusted. I was off air drive for half three. Now it is five o'clock, but I've been doing bits in between. I've been, you know, and the thing is, I'll still build today out as nine hours because I've done nine hours of work for the business, if you get what I mean. So what I've earned today, I divide it by nine to give me that sort of, you know, hourly sum. So I know what hourly sum I'm working to, like the actual hourly price. It's just something I do. But yeah, I really, as I said, I really do enjoy my job. Uh, so it's been eight jobs today. So let's break down the eight jobs. Five of them are all on one road. Uh, and it does come in time. And I'll tell you how I think, I, well, I'll tell you how I've done it. Now, don't get me wrong. I've not got five days of this, but I've got Monday. But I do end up picking up work from other people, local. Uh, you know, I will do the neighbors or the neighbor neighbor or somebody on the road. And how I do it is, so I don't have a sign written van, but it's a green van. So hopefully people think, oh, green gardener. Uh, I have a uniform, but I am transitioning to a uniform. I'll explain that in a bit. But I've got the famous shirt. Um, and basically how I get work is obviously advertising all that. But for me, local. So when you do a job at somebody's house, you will become part of somebody's routine and you've got a potential customer who will be walking past you pretty much that same time every time you go 
Now, depending on where you work, you might have it where there might be 10 of the same people you recognise every time who walks a dog at that same time, because that's their routine and you become part of it. And what that allows you to do is, depending on person, some people might just go and do a job and not speak to anybody, but you can tell with me I'm a chatty person. And, you know, I notice people who walk past, some of them, they don't want to be talked to. As in, if you wave or they look at you like you've, you know, something bad. But the rest of them do. And, you know, I, you're right. You're right, are you? How are you? You know, lovely day today. You know, anything to start the conversation. And that's how I picked up work on that road. Just by talking to people. Some people walked up and had a chat with me and said, Oh, are you a gardener? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I need my lunch. Can you come give us a quote? Yeah, no problem. And that's how it sort of goes. Um, so basically, never underestimate the power of a smile or a wave or, a, you know, a passing comment or hi, how are you? Or a smile. It, you know, it really does because then you're on that person's radar and they aren't, you know, you might not have a sign written van, you might not have a uniform, but you're pushing them away. <laughs> you know, and you've got a van, odds on they think you're a gardener and they'll bear it in mind and they'll come out to you at some point. So never underestimate the power of just simple little gestures. So today is also marked price rise day for some of my customers. Um, now, how I do price rises, I'm gonna do a separate video on it, but for me, the price rise is always the first day back on a new season. It's as simple as that, or the first job back, basically on a new season. Uh, they don't get the price rise that day, they get the price rise on the next visit. So, Mrs. Such and Such today, I had a classic one, and this, one of my customers, She's probably the tightest person, 50s, on my entire round. If she can get me going once every six weeks and charging the same, she would. And she would be happy at that. I have to, so today, a classic example, I'll see you in two weeks. Oh, do you think it would last a month? No. I said, we in between now and the next time I come, there's going to be a spurt. It, it happens, you know, soil temperature, once it hits a certain time, it'll warm up. I says, other than that, I said, I wanted to get the trees done because they've got no leaves on them at the moment. Perfect time just to give them a little bit of a trim here and there. Oh, yeah, I've been thinking about that. So she's not tight in the sense with me that she's peevish and no, you will be here in a month's time, but you get what I mean. If she could, she would. Put it this way, the daughter told me that she's that tight that when she cooks bacon or anything under the grill, anything in the oven, if she takes the food out to turn it, she'll turn that grill and that oven off. Maybe that's a life hack, I don't know. But they had a laugh and I thought it was a bit thrifty. So she was the customer I was the least, you know, I knew might be sort of not, you know, and she, and, you know, she might not like the price rise. So I charge her £30 every two weeks to maintain her property, to keep her property up to scratch, up to standard. So I could just do the lawns one time, I could do the lawns and the borders, I could do the hedge, I could do the shrubs. That works for me. I have this pricing with people, that works for me, and it works for me if it keeps to the fortnightly. If people start going off track, it's not working for me, and that's when I have to say to people, we need to keep it at this. So her price has gone from £30 to £33, so a 10% price increase. Now, I, did, I said to her at the start of the visit, I said, just letting you know, as from the next visit, so not today, two weeks from today, I will be, I have had to put my prices up, so it'll be a new price. And I'll be honest with you, you could see her face drop. You could see it drop. I was like, fuck's sake. And I told her, and I'll be honest with you, it's only three pounds. I know people could be struggling for free. So it's six pound a month for her, basically. And I suppose over a season, you know, it does add up. Uh, but what that three pounds doing for me is that half of the people are getting a 10% rise. Uh, and, you know, it's just gonna keep, you know, it's just gonna top me up. It's not gonna mean that I can go on two more holidays. It's gonna mean that I'm still doing what I wanna be doing, you know, I, so I can provide the best quality of service get the best kit because I, I do put money back into the business and I have had to explain this to people before this lady she was all right whether she has a think about it and she moans could be a possibility but she was all right she says no I understand she says everything's going up don't apologize for price rise don't talk that much about a price rise just explain to her there will be a price rise 
what the old price is, what the new price is, that's it. The more you talk, the more you can end up going down there. Oh, I've tried to keep the prices the same, and I've said this actually, I have said it in the past, but it sounds like you're apologising, you feel guilty, and then people think, well, why is he feeling guilty? Putting your prices up, you shouldn't. And then the other customers have told, they've understood it, they have understood it. Um, there's some jobs that I do that I don't need to put the prices up because I, I, in my opinion they're priced perfectly um, but some half of them have had to um, and normally it works on a rolling two year schedule so half of the customer got one year half of the set will be another year bit of pricing thing there for you so yeah no kickback no problem uh, no problems today really I did have one thing and I'll, I'll talk about it now is it's a case of what would you do in this situation but I know what I'll do honesty I always I always believe honesty is the best policy if you fuck up tell a customer if a customer fucks up and it's worth telling them tell them you know so if some if they do something that upsets you and you think it's going to affect how you work with them in the future tell them if they're a complete a-hole and they won't understand it basically pick your battles but genuinely, if I make a mistake, I'll, I'll, I'll own up to it and I'll sort it out. And I've not made a mistake at all. But basically, I've been overpaid. I was talking to a mate of mine about it. Um, and he says, well, he says, realistically, you know, he says, you probably could have got away with it if you wouldn't have said anything. But he's like me. He's got a bit of a moral compass. And he says, well, he says, figures, if you do do that, it looks you look 20 times as guilty when they do find out and then it's a case of you've not sort of told them. So let's just set things into perspective. I've not been overpaid by a tenner, I've been overpaid by two grand. So it's a big whoopsie on somebody's part. Somebody's gonna, it's, and it's a business as well, it's commercial business. So somebody's gonna have, at some point in time, they're gonna notice that money. Somebody could lose the job over that money at some point, it's two grand, you know, a lady or a bloke on the finance department might sweep a couple on you know 20 quid under the floor but not two grand another thing as well is i don't i believe in a fair day's work for a fair day's price i don't want to be two grand up off somebody else's mistake and then sweating cobbles thinking that shit they're going to find out um, because i want to build relationships and this commercial customer has been very good to me they've got a lot of property and they've got a lot of Basically, they could, they've could they got the potential to throw a lot of work my way. So how it works for me is I look after two of their properties and I invoice them. I invoice them after every visit. And sometimes they'll pay me, you know, for those two invoices. They do forget. They don't think they forget, but it's, it's how they do their payroll. And basically, at the moment, they're owing me for, I think, like four visits. So like two sets of two. And it's about £500, I reckon. And uh, when they paid that two grand on, I was like, bloody hell, that's not what I was expecting. And they paid it Thursday night, Friday morning, I'd rung up and reported it. I couldn't get through to the person. I'd rung up this first thing this morning, told them. Um, it was a bit of a disbelief because I think they trust their department. And I said, well, look, double check it, but I am more than certain that you have overpaid me. And she said, bloody hell, we've never had anybody say that before. I says, well, look, I says, I feel more comfortable if you just check. And if it is, you know, I could, I'm not wrong, but, you know, if it is that I am, I'm not, then I'm up that money, but I'm not. I know how much I should be paid, and it's not that. Uh, and that's it, basically. It's just honesty. And she thanked me. She says, look, she says, some people want to done that, you know. And then I says, well, look, you know, and I explained, fair price, fair day work. Uh, and that's it. I don't want to get ahead by, you know, somebody else's mistake. And like my friend said, you probably could have got away with it. But when it finds out, when they do an audit, end of the year, and they're two grand down, that person, they will, they will find out it's me. They'll find out where it's gone. And me, six months down the line, when they message me saying, you know, we paid you this extra, why didn't you say? Okay, could be there for I don't know. I don't want to be sat there with my pants down and my things up my arse. Uh, you know, oh, well, I, 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 it's your mistake. It's my money now. No, it isn't. Is it legally? I don't know. But even if it is mine, that customer's never going to work with me again. 
and trust me the money that they've overpaid is a drop in the ocean to what they paid in the past so i don't want to risk it i don't want to blow it tell you another thing when people trust you this is the biggest thing about trust when people trust you they leave you alone that's the biggest thing i can say to you you build trust with people they won't be on your back they won't be oh have you done this you've done that they don't need to think about asking you that because they trust you they know you've done it so as i said when they come up with it money will be going straight back to them when they ask for it because they've got to look at the things they've got to double check their end first uh, but it will be sorted so a bit of a detour from today but all this has happened today so i thought i may as well you know bark it off but as i said i think honesty is the best policy but debate that in the comments. Have a good day, guys.